Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we won't be doing any actual programming. I'm just going to be planning for the next project. So if you're just here for the code, you might want to skip over this one and come back for the next one. But I said I was going to start a new project, a game of something fairly large. And I think I've settled on a game like Stardew Valley. Um, if you're familiar with it, it's pretty popular, so a lot of people are probably already familiar with it. Um, but it's a, it's a modern game that came out a couple of years ago. Um, has a lot of different aspects to it. It's like a lot of different things put together. It's an RPG where you have skills that you level up as you, as you advance. Um, it's a farming game where you plant stuff and raise animals and, and sell your produce and that kind of thing. Um, it's also a social game where you meet other people. There are other people in town and you have relationships with them, friendships that you build up and then they do nice things for you, stuff like that. It's a dungeon game where you can go mining in the dungeons and uh, fight monsters. Um, there's, a, there's a fishing game in it. So it's all these different things combined together. And it's been pretty popular. Um, now, why, why try to do this on the 128? Well, first of all, we can't really do Stardew Valley on the 128. Um, first reason is the copyright. You can't just copy a game. Um, but the other reason is it would be impossible. Um, it's, it's far too advanced a game for the 128 to do, um, especially in terms of the graphics and sound and things. Um, if you look at a picture, let's see here. Here's, here's a picture of, well, let me move this around. Okay, there's a picture of Stardew Valley. Um, it's 3D, so you can walk behind things. Like, you can walk behind trees and stuff. They fade out, so you can go behind them. You know, it's, it's a game with modern graphics and sound and all that. Um, what's funny is, because it's pixel art, you'll hear people say this is like, this is like games from the 80s, but it's not at all. It's not even... It's late 90s or, or further on um, so even though it kind of has a retro look to it it's not it's not anything we didn't have anything like it in the 80s in terms of graphics um, here here's what we had in the 80s here's Ultima 5 um, this is mid 80s um, a pretty a nice looking game that this is an in this is an inside shot the outside looks a little better I think but still basically you're dealing with you know, your, your guy is this white um, guy with the shield, and that's who you look, you know, that's who you look like the whole time, and the other people look like that, and you walk around and talk to people and stuff. Um, this is Legacy of the Ancients. It's another game where you walk around. I specifically picked games where you walk around town and talk to people because that's kind of what you do in Stardew Valley. So, Again, you had just basically a shape as your person, and you walked around into the different shops and stuff. Um, this is Pool of Radiance. This was a little fancier because it had this isometric view, sort of a top-down 3D look to it, even though it's not 3D in any sense of the word. But, but your characters at least had some color, and um, as far as sound went, there were two sounds. There was a whoosh when you missed and a whack when you hit. That was, that was the extent of the sound. So this is probably more like more realistically what we're looking at being able to do here as far as the look of the game. Um, we're not going to be able to do anything like this. Um, but I thought it might just be fun to see what could be done, um, with the, with the abilities of the 128 and so I started this file of sort of ideas and I don't necessarily probably need to go through everything I just kind of threw some of the things in here that the Stardew Valley has and I think you know the, the first thing will be to just figure out okay what what can we fit into a 128k system and what it you know what is it capable of doing I think some things like the friendships with people and the dialogue with with the townspeople, we should be able to do that because even games like like Ultima Five had that that you walked around the world and you talked to different people. Now most of them didn't have very much to say, but that was that was part of the game. Something like mining and fighting in the mines that's not going to be it's not going to be doable the way Stardew Valley does it at least and as a real time thing I don't suppose um, although now that I think about it, it 
there were games on the on the Commodore 64 where you ran around and fought things, but um, whether we can fit that into a game that's also an RPG and also a social game and so on, I don't know. So it'll be interesting just to see what can we do, um, how much how much can we squeeze into a game um, with this hardware. Now, one reason I one reason I want to do this is to take advantage of the Commodore 128's features, the, the things that are specific to it, you know, rather than writing a game for the 64, we want to write a game for the 128, which means we want to take advantage of it as much as possible. So the big thing would be the 80 column screen. Um, now whether to use this, whether to use it or not, is an open question because you, there's pros and cons to using that. It, it is a I'd like to use it because it is a 128 specific feature that you don't have on the 64, um, but there there are some pretty big drawbacks to it. Um, the pros are you, you can then double your processor speed because without without the 40 column screen on, you can kick the processor up into two megahertz mode, so your whole program is going to run twice as fast right off the bat. Um, the 80 column screen has twice the resolution. Uh, horizontally, you have 640 by 200 instead of 320 um, by 200, and you can go interlaced vertically, so you can get 640 by 400. Although, when I tinkered with that back in the day, I do remember it was kind of kind of jittery. It wasn't a real smooth picture when you did that. Um, you have 512 characters at a time instead of being limited to one set of 256 or the other. So if you're making a game with char using characters to make the graphics, um, that that's going to matter that you have a lot more characters to work with. And it has built-in. Um, we'll get we'll get more into the details of the of the 80 column chip in a future video, but it has some built-in features that are pretty nice where it will it will copy blocks of um, data on its own, and it also has some nice scrolling where you don't have to do all the scrolling yourself in your program necessarily you can just or or like copying um, copying memory you don't have to copy your program doesn't have to copy if you want to take a chunk of memory that represents say a house on the screen copy it to another place or if you just want to shift the whole screen you just tell the the 80 column chip to do that you don't have to actually your program doesn't have to be doing it as it happens um, so there are some nice features there. Um, on the downside, you have no sprites right off the bat. Um, the sprites are unique to the VIC chip, so you don't have those on the VDC and the 80 column. Access to it is through a single pair of single pair of memory locations. Where inst so instead of being able to just put a character on the screen by just storing it in a particular uh, memory location you have to talk to the 80 column chip and say I'd like you to put something at location such and such okay now here's the location to put there or here's here's the character to put there there's a lot of handshaking that has to go on every time you put stuff on the screen um, now again that's sort of balanced by these by the faster copy routines and um, the fact that once you do put a character on the screen, you can tell it to repeat that character a certain number of times, and it'll just do it without you having to wait. Um, there's there's some things like that that sort of balance that, but still, the access to it is slow. It's certainly slower than just direct, directly writing to the RAM that you can do with the VIC. Um, the other thing is the 128 had a 16K. The, the stock one 128 comes with... 16k of RAM um, attached to the 80 column chip. It has its own separate RAM. It doesn't use the the main RAM at all, which is nice in a way because it's not using up any of it. That frees it up for other things. But the stock 128 came with 16k. Now, if you put it in graphical mode, to where you have a graphical bitmap that uses it all, 640 by 200, one one bit per dot on the screen. That's it's all used up, which means you're then li you're limited to two colors, a foreground color and a background color. We don't want that. Um, so we're probably going to 
use character graphics, which I, I think will work okay. I think th those other games I was showing on the 64, I don't know whether they used, like, um, this might have been sprites. I'm just not sure. Although, you know, it's just, it's just hard to say. Um, this, to me, almost looks like it was character graphics, just because of the way everything, everything is a, is a shape, you know, is a square or rectangle, whatever, but, um, I just don't know, um, how they did that necessarily, but the point being, um, with the only six, anyway, what I was getting at, there's 16K of RAM then in a stock 128. Now, the 128D that came out in the U.S., at least, the, the metal cased one, has 64K, which allows you to do a whole lot more. Um, allows you to, you know, you, you could have more as far as, like, say, say you're putting your maps in, in the video memory, you can put bigger maps in there and scroll them around. You could have a bit, you could use bitmap graphics, and you, you have plenty of space to have bitmap, to have the bitmap end colors. Um, the only problem is then, if you write a game that requires you to have that 64K, people with a stock 128 can't use it. Now, um, there, it was a fairly simple upgrade, I believe, to to upgrade. Like I said, mine already had the 64K in it, my original one, um, my 128 DCR, and when I did get a few other 128s, I just didn't worry about it. But there was uh, there was like a daughter board you could plug into it that would give you the 64K, or you could solder and take out the 16K chip. I think it. I don't know if it was one chip or two, but anyway, you could take out the original chips, put in bigger chips, and it was a fairly simple soldering job. So I don't really know as far as what's out there in terms of, you know, if, if we create a game for the 128, I'd like it to be playable on all 128s, I guess, is what is the bottom line, because that's all, you're already limiting the the user base, you know, the number of people who can enjoy it already by saying it's it's 128 only. So I don't really want to limit it further to only 64K enabled 128s. Um, now in the Vice Emulator, you can just turn that on or off, whatever. So it doesn't matter there. Everybody would be able to use it. Um, but I think we're going to try to stick to that 16K limit if we can. And that so then that's you know that's one of the cons. But I do think unless unless we get into it and I just decide no, we've got to have sprites. This just isn't going to work. You know in the VDC. Um, unless we get into it and that happens, I am going to use the VDC, the, the AD column, because it is a, a C128 feature that I'd like to show off and um, demonstrate how to use it. Um, this is what it looks. Th this is what it looks like. Um, I wrote a little. Or let's see. I was writing a little program here. Yeah, this just demonstrates the colors that it has. It has the same well. It has 16 colors, just like the, just like the 40 column chip does. But they're not quite the same 16. To me, they look a little more. I don't know. It, they're they're sharper, and that's probably it's partly because of the higher resolution. But they just they've always seemed like sharper colors to me. But there are some softer ones in here that I think will do okay when we get to when we want to draw grass and stuff like that. I think we'll be able to manage, um, but. That's one of the big limits with both the 40, 40 column and 80 column. Um, it's just at that, that time, 16 colors is what you had. So you, you do your best to mix them and do what you need to do with them. Um, back to the notes here. Another feature that we definitely want to use is the second bank of RAM. You know, we've got 128K of RAM. A lot of times that second bank that second 64K just sits there and doesn't get used much because um, certainly if you're in Commodore, if you're in 64 mode, it doesn't get used. But um, it is, you know, you do have to write your code to take advantage of that. And so we're going to use all of the RAM if that we possibly can and cut down on, you know, how much disk access has to be done using that. Um, a couple of things that maybe we could do. Um, 
there's uh, the, the 128 and the 1571 drive, and I think the 1581 drive also had something called burst mode, which was a very fast. They, there was a slow mode and then a fast mode and then burst mode. So burst mode was like super fast. I remember back in the day tinkering around with it, and you were supposed to be able to pull um, pull sectors off a disc really, really fast. I don't remember too many of the details. I'd have to dig back into the uh, technical manuals and stuff. But um, basically, to get the highest possible speed, I think what you had to do was you had to write some code that sat on the computer side, and then you also had to write some code that you loaded into the disk side because the disks, the Commodore disk drives, were computers in their own right. They had their own... Um, I don't know if it was a 6502 or a 6500 or something, but they had their own processor. They were running their own code. They had like 5K of RAM, some or it might have might have only been five blocks of RAM, but they had a or 2K something like that. But they had just enough RAM basically to run the little bit of code that they needed to run to understand how to get stuff off the disk and you know save stuff to the disk because the computer would just tell the disk drive, "Give me such and such a file." and then the disk drive would go get it off the sector. So it had to know how to do that stuff. And then it had a, a, a block or two of memory as the buffer then. And so to get the fastest speed, if I remember right, you had to write basically a program to sit at each end of that serial connection and handshake back and forth. And uh, you could get some really good speed that way. But I don't remember any of the details, so I'll have to dig back into the, into the uh, manuals on that and see what that's about. Another possibility would be to write, to include some Z80 code. Um, the Commodore 128 has a Z80 processor in it, which was used for CPM. Um, and the, the Z80 is, it, it's, it's completely separate from the, the 8502. Um, and you can't run them at the same time. When you kick one of them on, the other one shuts off. So it's not like a multiprocessor system where you can you know use them both but you can set up some z80 code and then kick it on and let it run that code and then let it kick back to the 8502 when it's done um, the the operating system itself actually does some of this when it's first starting up the system now the couple of reasons possibly to do this one would just be it's kind of a cool idea i always thought it'd be fun to do um, another one is that the Z80 processor does have some advantages, possibly, in doing certain things. Um, the, it has a, the Z80 has several registers instead of just three. It treats some of its registers in pairs as a 16-bit register. Um, but, I mean, those, those are some of the pros. The, on, on the downside, its operations tend to take more cycles. Um, it can also run faster. It can run it up to four megahertz um, in the fastest possible mode. So it's possible that there would be some things like say copying blocks of memory from one place to another that would be done faster in Z80 to where we could set up routines just to do that and then run those routines to do that particular thing. So so I don't know. I don't know if that will be be useful in the game or just something to do along the way as sort of a demonstration of here's something you can do that's kind of cool. You can kick on this other processor that's just been sitting there gathering dust most of the time and uh, use it to run some code and then and then come back to your main program. Um, I put background music on here. That's not a 128 thing. I mean, the 64 had great music and or had great sound and uh, some games had great music, and the, the 128 has the same sound chip, so that's not really a, a 128 thing, but um, there were a lot of games that didn't have any music just because you only had so much processor and memory to work with, and so music was one of the things that, that uh, you didn't have. Um, in Ultima 5, when you played it on the 64, you didn't have music. When you played it in the 128, it actually took advantage of um, the larger memory to load in music that you, then you had background music while you played. So that's something that uh, to keep in mind that we definitely want more than just whoosh and uh, whack as far as sound goes. We want to have some nice sound and, and possibly some background music. Um, so far as the plan here goes, 
I think, you know, I don't know. I, I, this is this is basically it. This is as much planning as I've done so far. So um, we're just going to have to start and start um, designing, you know, pieces of it. Figure out how the maps are going to work. Um, what the character, you know, what the characters are going to look like. How how are the graphics going to be laid out? I think the first video I'll do will actually be to write the 80 column routines and we'll, because we're going to need those basically to start doing anything else. We're going to need to be able to put stuff on that screen. So the next video for this will be um, writing those routines and then building up from those routines to be able to say, okay, here's, here's say, a, here's a, here's a chunk of memory that represents the town or the farm or whatever how do we translate that to the video memory get all that transferred over there and is it going to be fast enough that's going to be one of the things to figure out is can we get this stuff copied from main memory to the video memory through those two registers fast enough to make the game enjoyable basically fast enough that it's not a pain in the ass and we have to decide well let's give up on the 80 column go back to the 40 column um, I think we can do it but uh, we'll see how it goes so that is that is that for this time um like i said next time we'll come back we'll get started on those 80 column routines and get going on this i expect this to be a long project and uh in parallel with it i'm going to keep working on some smaller ones like the sha 256 um, hash calculator that i'm in the middle of right now um, we'll have another one of those out this week um, so we'll, we'll continue with smaller projects alongside this one, and uh, this will be the big one that I expect to take a long time. So, And uh, I don't know how much we'll be able to accomplish. We'll just push to the limits of my programming ability and see where that ends up. So that's the plan. Um, I guess that's all there is to say about it. So... I'll be back with another one on this um, after one on the two uh, after one on the hash calculator. I'll be back with the first one on this within the week. And thank you for watching.